Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Chase here again, back to talk about uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and today we have a special guest. It is Rick, my dad. Hey, guys. Hey, so, guys. <laughs> so, uh, today we'll be talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, so, right out of the gate, what did you think about it? I loved it. Um, the first one was mediocre at best, but this one was a huge improvement. Really, really enjoyed it. I think you're saying mediocre is too nicely about it. Yeah, it was, it was we nice. Don't, we don't need to talk about the past situation, but like when when you look at it, there is no comparison. It is genuinely way leagues ahead of league ahead of it. <laughs> 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 One thing, and I don't know if this happened to anyone else. I haven't heard anyone else talk about it, but ours was out of sync with the voice and dialogue. Nice. Just just a little bit, just like by a millisecond. Not not enough to make it jarring and. It just, it definitely, I definitely noticed it. It was like, you, you noticed that, you know? Yes. So, I don't know, that might just be ours. Steppenwolf. The change of Steppenwolf was just amazing. Detail and the armor, I mean, he just looked so much better. And, you know, that's just my number one take from it that uh, I really enjoyed. Yeah, he was, a, he was a villain that I genuinely cared about his motivations. I was like, okay, so we're not going to talk into spoilers, so spoiler free, but his motivations were much clearer in this one. They were barely even explained in Justice League 2017, or I'll call it Justice League. They, they were barely discussed it in that version. Uh, I don't even think it's ever mentioned. I, I think his motivations were much clearer in this one. And obviously his design. I'm still not 100% a fan of his design, being honest. I still think, I think it's fine, but it's so much better than Justice League's version, the 2017 version, which looked like a, a PS3 kind of cutscene character, which it was morbidly bad. The bank heist Wonder Woman scene, I felt was fine. I don't really like either version. And my main thing for superhero movies is superheroes helping people in like in, in, in danger and I just thought this one was just done fine. She looked a little goofy to me uh, just in that Bang Robbie scene. That's just my opinion though. Didn't you, I think you liked it a bit better. Um, I remember liking it a lot in the Josh, Justice League but um, it He's didn't dead. have the same effect as uh, the first time so I don't know if they changed or took away. I have to go back and review the other one to compare. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I love her entrance, but, yeah, it just didn't seem, have the same, same effect. Yeah, I, I, I kind of do agree. Even though this, this film's league, leagues uh, ahead of the other one, I, I just, I don't know. I didn't really like that version, this version of it. Also, if you love slow motion, you're, you're in a bloody good time with this one, and there is so much slow motion. The segues into my next thing. I think you could have shaved off a little bit off of this movie. Yes. Um, easily 30 minutes. Good, maybe 30 minutes. It could have been three and a half hours. And also, the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, I thought was, like, usually, you know, it, it's really used well in the Lighthouse and WandaVision. And I was like, do we really have to do it? But it, he does it for IMAX, so you see more of top and bottom instead of left and right. And I think it, you, you don't even think about it, honestly. I thought it worked pretty well. Yeah, um, it didn't bother me at all. I, when you first told me about it, I was like, eh, wasn't sure, but no, it worked out great. Um, you know, like the, uh, regular full screen version instead of um, the letterbox, but yeah, looked out real, looked real good. The Amazon, see, the Amazon warrior sequence is phenomenal in this one. Like I genuinely was like feeling like emotions and excitement watching it. And the Justice League one, there's barely anything going on. And it's not because this version is rated R and it's super hardcore and blood and stuff, but it, I just think it had more impact. There's a lot more going on, a lot more action that happened with it. And I felt, Again, Steppenwolf was much better, you know, he, he's not like a Thanos kind of level villain, but you kind of get a little bit of that vibe from him, right. a little bit. I just thought he was done really well, and I think having that villain impact definitely impacted the fight scenes. It made him more effective, whatever. Atlantis, it's really jarring seeing Zack Snyder's version of Atlantis compared to James Wan's. Like, they do the bubble to talk, and right. I guess they just didn't have that technology for the, the underwater hair. I was thinking that, but you do see the underwater hair, and it looks good in this one. It looks just as good as Aquaman in the movie, so I think that's just Zack Snyder's different vision than James Wan. Also, Atlantis, you don't see anything in Atlantis. It's just like ruins, which no. I still think is cool. It's just really jarring going, like, looking of James Wan's Aquaman. It's like, like an, an actual city, and it's like, there's that one scene where it's like giant white throne room, and it looks like, yeah, but like you know, it's just weird. and they have like technology. And you just don't really see much yeah, of they, that. They didn't touch much on Atlantis, so. which is fine. It's just really weird seeing just like the ruins of it. So like individual characters, what did you think about the Flash? Probably the same. I mean, he, he was a great character. You know, um, uh, you know what he's trying to do. Um, he's funny, um, quirky. Mm -hmm. Some of the jokes don't always land. 
um, but I feel like they land better in this. And not only that, they, they do add to his character just a little bit, um, but the main character that shone or shined for me was Cyborg. Cyborg, Cyborg. Cyborg was so a, a real story and more action and more to do in this movie than the first one. I don't remember caring any about Sky Cyborg in Justice League, but this one I was like, I really like, like this is great. That was a character I genuinely really cared about. Uh, and it made me very happy to finally get Cyborg some light. Cyborg discovering his abilities, I thought that was really cool. I, I really thought that was just really neat, going through all like his past and stuff, uh, seeing like going into his mind as well. I thought it was just like really cool. Connection with his dad as well it was just really interesting, like uh, interesting to see uh, Flash's connection with his dad. You see why in the movie, and why it is, and then how it changes through. He goes from um, the last movie where he just starts in and does his thing whenever he never really tried before because he stayed hidden away from society. Mm -hmm. So he actually, you know, started training and trying to use all of his um, abilities and so that was a good change. You actually see his background in this. Yes. Because in the first one, we don't see, we just see him living with his dad. We don't anything about his mom. I don't remember anything about his mom. No, I just remember he played football and that was it. We don't even see football the first one, I think, either. I just saw in the trailers mainly, and yeah. I was like, I remember watching, like, where's the football scene? Like, also, I, I didn't know he lived in Gotham. Maybe that's just a thing that Zack Snyder did, but I don't remember Cyborg living in Gotham, yeah. but he played for the, the Gotham City, Gotham, um, whatever high school, yeah, the high school, whatever. Yeah, and they didn't mention anything about his mom in the first one. I don't remember sure. anything. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe a passing line, but that version is so forgettable. Or how he became injured. They didn't really that either, that yeah. Either. yeah. This is a completely different movie. This is a completely different vision. One thing we saw in this version that I don't remember seeing at all was the the little crab thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, this isn't really a spoiler, but like it's just really interesting seeing Zack Snyder's and Chris Oterio's vision of this mind mapper thing. It's like a little crab, it like connects to your mind and it shows you stuff. A hologram of yeah. what you're thoughts are or I just what thought you it was know, really so. neat. It reminded me of like a Star Trek when they put that bug in the captain's uh, esophagus in the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek. I thought there was going to be an intermission, but I was told there was going to be an intermission, but there was no intermission. No intermission. Through. Also, I thought it was going to be um, in black and white as well. There's a version of Click on black and white uh, with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, but I don't remember seeing on HBO. A strong point in this movie is the foreshadowing of Zack Snyder's vision. Insane, by the way. Like if you're a fan of this, uh, if you're a fan of his vision, a fan of his movies, you're gonna love this. This, this is what you've been fighting. This is what we've all been fighting for. Also, I would like to like congratulate him, like finally getting here as well, and seeing his own vision. Even if you think this sucked, even if you didn't like it, it's still amazing seeing his vision finally. Yeah, from what he went through and able yeah. to complete this, so yeah, to congratulations, that, yeah, that. Yeah, we congratulate you. That's that's terrible what has happened going through this process as well. So it's finally happened. It's nice to see his vision and not only, but it was great. Like I generally thought this was a really good movie. Like I, I had a blast watching this. Yeah, we made jokes that uh, this may be a laughable four hours, but or really, boring. we were and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And it wasn't even that boring, honestly. This movie doesn't have a lot of spoilers, but there's a few where I'm like, I kind of just want, if you're watching this, please go watch Zack Snyder's vision. Please go watch it because like, Especially if you're a DC fan. Um, and I have problems with Batman vs. Superman. Big problems. Like, I do not, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think it's really boring, and I think it demystifies the character of Superman and Batman in pretty major ways. That being said, I've kind of, they, those problems aren't really that apparent in this one, if I'm being honest. Batman has a little bit still, but overall, I'm like, I'm just happy to see these versions of these characters interpreted in his vision instead of Joss Whedon's, which I think, I just think it worked really well for this movie. I don't really have that much more to talk about for non-spoilers, um, so we can go to like little final verdicts. What do you, what would you rate this movie? Um, I have to give it a strong 8 out of 10. It was a long four hours, yeah, four, yeah. four hour movie, but um, it was great. Great through, watch it thoroughly, and um, yeah, great job, Zach. Yeah, I'm really stuck between like a seven or an eight. I'm like, I, gen I really want to give it an eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to agree, I'm gonna give this one an eight. I really like had a blast watching this, and it's no it's no secret. Dark Side is in this movie. Fantastic. He's not in a lot. I'll give it that, but a force that I was genuinely kind of scared of. I'm like, oh, the crap's going down. It just excites me that there may be a future for DC. Maybe, maybe. I mean, 
you know, you see what Marvel is doing and they're blowing out the water. Hopefully DC can get it together and I continue think this could be that stepping stone. They need it because this movie is great. They have so much more they can do. They just need to get on the same track and produce something that's amazing. And the thing is, we know Zack Snyder's trilogy or, or, or two movies. I think they might, they, they might both be four hours or it might just be a trilogy. But the ideas he has, he definitely has a clear vision. And, I'm, and it just sucks that I got scrabbled away. Even if some of it was bad, I still think this dude knows like what exactly what he wants. And I think that's that's really important because I like Disney and I like Star Wars, but the trilogy there was no clear vision with Star Wars recent trilogy. There was literally there was they did not have plan a synopsis to the first three movies. Yes. So I I think that that definitely has a strong point going for if DC does decide to keep Zack Snyder. If, they, if Warner Brothers does decide to let him do that, he has a vision I think it'll work for Take it. what he's built and continue on instead of going sideways and creating your own mess. Mm -hmm. Keep up with what he's got going on. His skills is really great and uh, you can have a strong future and, and maybe catch up with Marvel. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's our that's our final verdict. Uh, so, for the non-spoilers. All right, so now we're going to talk about spoilers. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about it, but uh, it's your fair warning. We'll give you a few seconds to click off the video uh, because I really think you should go watch it. I really think you should just experience it. And it's in your home. It's not in the theater. So just pause it. Go do something else if you really want to. Um, but, yeah, we're going to talk about spoilers now. Um, Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. That was a good reveal. That was Pretty awesome. That was a that was a scene where I'm like, this is good character building for Lois and and Martha, but like I don't think the scene could have kept in. And then he and then Martha walks out and the eyes turn and I'm like, whoa, maybe it's a parody or something. I was like, oh my god, it's Martian Manhunter. Like, really? I didn't know what to expect. I was blown away. I figured then... we would see him. But I didn't think we'd see him then. No. Yeah. It was kind of weird. I'll admit where he's like, it turns into Martian Manhunter and he says, oh, what, what he says he says like. You need to start living or whatever. I forget. I forget what he says. And then he changes into the general that we see in Man of Steel. I was like, a little weird. It's kind of like a Darth Maul in Solo. He turns on the lightsaber. Right. It's just like a, just a show. He's just like, I'm here, sure Darth Maul. <laughs> but um, I, I was like, wow. Like we're really seeing Martian Manhunter on our screen, and I think he looks really good. Yes. Yeah. I was very excited to see that. And then he introduces himself at the very end too. So yeah. Just very, to make sure you don't yeah, know who he is. So yeah. <laughs> Which is weird. He's like, he gives him his name. Now he turns in. I don't know. Do you know he can turn into like anything? I, he can turn into whatever he wants. Yeah. So he's like Beast Boy and Teen Titans. Oh, okay. So I wonder. I wonder if we're going to see him shape shift. If if they do continue, I wonder if we'll see him shape shift in these next movies too. This wasn't the first thing that blew my mind though. But just seeing the apocalypse future, it's like in a dream with, uh, with Bruce Wayne, and it's really interesting. It's very very injustice like, and I, I forget I forget the other thing. Flashpoint as well. Uh, which I think Warner Bros. is going to try. The Flash movie, they're trying to do Flashpoint. Yeah, they mentioned multiverses. Yeah, yeah, they, they talked about multiverses in this one, too. There's just a brief mention. And I thought it was really interesting seeing Jared Leto's Joker talk with Batman, finally. Like, it's like they're finally on screen together. And I hate Suicide Squad. <laughs> I can't stand it. I, 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 I don't think it's worse than Justice League, but it's definitely... I can make fun of Justice League. I, I cannot watch Suicide Squad. I just can't. I did not like Jerry Lewis Joker in this. Uh, yes. and, and Suicide Squad, I think he's fine in this. I, I just think it was just maybe David Ayer maybe had a different vision than what Zack Snyder did. But I, I think I think Jerry Lewis was a fine Joker. It, it, I wasn't like blown away and I wasn't like, cool. He was a cool, creepy Joker. Eerie, you know. Eerie, but um, it, it, it was fine. It, it was... He made some really inappropriate jokes, which I was like, you know what, fine. Like, we're in this universe. Also, Batman says the F word. <laughs> in your granddad's Justice League, he says the F word in this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't believe he said that, too. And they also, that does kind of realize my, my problem with Zack Snyder's Batman is he was like, I will effing kill you or something. Did he say something like that? If you make the mistake, I will fucking kill you. He's, I was like, I, I understand we're in the apocalypse we're at yeah, this point, but like, and that is times. your number one rule. Mm -hmm. But Zack Snyder's clearly isn't his number one rule because in Batman vs Superman he would have killed a lot of people. Killed. Where <laughs> else? Ruthlessly. <laughs> and I think the warehouse scene. I don't think he killed anyone. He did hit that dude's the head. The dude with the, the, the crates. Yeah, yeah, he might I'm have. Pretty a, sure he's he might have a brain, brain tumor. damage. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting brain damage, but he also he shot. Anyway, we're not gonna talk about Superman. We're talking about good stuff right now. And <laughs> Batman Superman, I just don't think he's that. It's rated R. I'm not sure why. Yeah, there's some language, some blood, but. That's it. I, I just so, think that just Zack Snyder's wanted a 
And it wasn't that much darker, really. I no. think Batman vs Superman had a darker tone than this. Yeah. I think this had a lighter tone, just had some cursing and uh, just a little bit of blood. It wasn't as gory as I thought it yes. was. If you have kids, they can, I would say, okay, that's your choice, but yeah. um, I mean, you know, I don't think it was uh, I don't think it would, horrible. Yeah, if I had a kid, I wouldn't be so sad if they watched this. I'd be like, they can, yeah. you know, they can watch this just fine. There's a couple things that kind of blew my mind that I didn't think we would, but when we saw when cyborg was opening the mother box and saw into the future yes. of the apocalyptic future amazing i was like i was all for it seeing uh, uh lois lane be killed and then superman again being tempted by dark side yes. and then becoming dark sides like puppet, puppet. Or whatever. Yes, yeah he bowed down so to good. Him. Yes. Oh, and like cool. and you see wonder woman is uh, to me it looked like wonder woman was like on a plate and they made food out of her they like lemons and stuff and then like on a bonfire yeah something. like on a bonfire yeah. on feasting on her i was like what in the world am i this is sick like i i was all for it that was that might be my favorite sequence that yeah, was well, just dark side and his omega beams that was pretty awesome yeah that was uh, yeah because that was in that vision yeah because yeah, yeah. he was killing late like the, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. that was yeah. Yeah, that was the number one thing they had to do about dark side that, like i was like if you do his omega beams i'm cool with it and they do another thing about the the, uh, the future is you see a dead Green Lantern and you see Superman holds Batman's mask in yes. his head. I still want, not Chris Reeves Superman, but like a Boy Scout human Superman that I still don't think we've nailed. But I do want to see this. I do want to see evil Superman kick some butt, I think. I just think this universe fits it really well. But the one that Zack Snyder has built, I think that fits that really well. Flash going, doing uh, reverse done really well like i was like time. i thought they were about to like infinity war i was like are they really about to like cut it off with like everyone no. dying like i really thought like the mother box no. i was like is everyone like they're gonna like really like <laughs> like set us up for trailer sequence of seeing joker in the apocalypse i was like they're really gonna make that the epilogue and we're just gonna see the future and they're gonna like to be continued but no we don't do that uh amazing though Yes. Great, like that was that is the standout moment maybe in this movie for me. I loved it. In like Dark Side's way in the portal, yes. and he and he reverse flash. You see like all the the, the muscle and bones come together in the of the people. I thought that was just great. I knew that that was going to happen when they did brought Superman back to life because you saw because the flash a bit. reversed a little bit, More brought to my attention. And then after everyone, the mother boxes come together and everyone gets wiped out. And he was still away from everything. Mm -hmm. Then I saw, okay, he's going to go back in time. He's going to go yeah. light speed again and bring it back in time. So I was really awesome. I thought they were going to do that one comic cover of Flash where he's running so fast, his face was going to disintegrate into the skull. Oh, yes. I was like, I was like, they're really going to kill it. I was like, no, they're not going to do that. I was kind of feeling like that. And I know the CW show did that. And I got that vibe. I was like, is he sacrificing himself for this? But, uh, but no, I just thought it was a really amazing moment for. Uh, Flash's character because also he has this connection with his dad and I don't remember in the Justice League version But his dad's like, please don't come back and see me like do something with your life You're I'm holding you back and I was like, this was really sad like yeah. I want to talk about yes black suit Superman Oh, I we didn't even talk about it in non-spoilers and that's not even a spoiler Um, but it's well, it's not just a flashback or flash forward or just a dream sequence He's in it and he's fighting in his black Superman costume and it's awesome Beautiful. Just had a beard and mullet be perfect, but yeah, uh, if he had a mullet that'd be <laughs> But, uh, but like it's still he, he was beautiful. awesome um, Henry Cavill he's just the perfect Superman and um, loved the black suit. I don't know about perfect but he's definitely amazing I, I, I don't know about perfect though he's, I, he's definitely close for me yeah I, I, he could be close to perfect you know? I mean, yeah. he, he, he kind of like some of those characters to me I couldn't imagine anyone else playing him yeah uh, you know what? I honestly have to agree I think he's a almost perfect casting for yeah. him I just think he should get to be rid of him yes man yeah, I just right think, but, yeah, a, the, but I know a person his build I mean he's the physique and mm -hmm. his acting, uh, he's great. I know Warner Brothers is thinking of doing um, another Superman movie with J.J. Abrams, and it's gonna have a, an African American lead, which I'm fine with. I don't care. Like, please, like, you know, do a good Superman movie. But I still think we live in a world now where we can do Spider Verse and we can do Joker that don't correlate in that mainline universe. I still think we can do a Henry Cavill Superman, and you can still do that Black Superman story that you want to do. You can even put in that universe if you want. But I still like. I think Henry Cavill is such a good Superman, so that's why I really still want to see him kick butt of Superman, do, another, do a Man of Steel 2, introduce yes. him into these new, uh, in these new movies. I, I really think that's, that's my perfect vision, because I really want to see more of him. I don't remember 
Justice League talking about the anti-life equation being on Earth. Yes. Don't recall I don't it. remember anti that. Equation. So like when I heard that, I was like, holy crap, it is. Like, really? Might have happened Justice League, but I kind of forgot a lot about that movie. Yeah, so just, The mother box is all I remember. Yeah, that. so. Which again, very intense. I didn't think it would be as intense as it was, because we've seen this movie already. But this is a better version of it, yes. so. It's still, even though this is a movie you've already seen done differently a little bit, it's it still has that effect on you, which I think is the best part about this movie. You're still excited to see what happens. Stefan, what's um, his reasons for doing what he's doing? Talk about that. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about this, boys. Yeah, he want, he's like falling away from Darkseid, and Darkseid's giving him this um, this deed is like if you want to be if you want me to respect you again, you have to destroy five fifty five thousand planets or something like that. I'm like, oh, that's he has motivation. He just wants to praise his Dark Lord. Also, seeing Apocalypse was sick. Like, he's got stained glass, dark side face on stained glass and stuff. Did you ever see that in the background? No. Oh, it's so cool looking. Yeah, yeah we don't, I'll just show you that later. It's Desaad. Yeah, Desaad uh, has way more play. I don't think Desaad even Desaad has had no nothing. part in it before, yeah. so yeah. great it was nice seeing him. him. Yeah. yeah. One of us does give Zack Snyder not just this one chance that they let him come back, which I think could be a possibility. I think it could work. Um, and I, I, I think he could bring this vision of dark side and anti-life equation. I think I can come full circle. And then bring in Shazam. Green Lantern, if they can try to do another Green yeah. Lantern. Oh, they learn from their mistakes. Yes. We do see a Green Lantern in this movie. We did see in the last one too, but yes. I think it's such a little bit of this one. Yes. I thought it worked really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. There's a really just cool frame of him just like posed up. It's just like right there just for a few seconds lingering. It's like, Lantern's here, man. This one definitely had more of an effect with Superman dying at the start. I will admit it went on for a little too long. Just slightly too long, could have cut off a little bit of it. But I think Superman yelling out, calling, you can hear the, the last breath of, or the last breath of God or whatever. Yes. Hey, you can tell, because in the Joss League version, it's like, oh, they're coming because Superman's dead, but they don't really emphasize it. Right. This is, one, they're like, hey, he, there's he no one died. here to protect Earth. We gotta do it now. And they bring him back and he just kicks butt when he shows up. It's way awesome. better than he does. Uh, in the Justice League version, like he shows up, and stops the axe, and uses cool breath and breaks it, yes. and just and they and they and also a great thing in this in the final battle is they do duos, like you know in Avengers, Iron Man's blasting Captain America's shield, and he does they, right. they're doing team up stuff and they're fighting together, and that stuff that's, that's fighting as a team. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I want in a superhero ensemble movie. I think they did it really well in this. The number one thing this movie does for me is character building. It's not just like Cyborg and Flash. It's like every character gets moments where I'm like, this defines that character in this universe. And I think it was done really well. And especially the chemistry between the characters, I thought fit really well. And that's the thing I think is just lacking in this movie a little bit, is the ensemble connecting together. Because right after they all they all meet up and get together, right before they go to uh, Steppenwolf to fight, they don't really have them. They have little moments, but they don't have like any big moments where it's like they really connect interpersonally. I still think this is, again, this is, leagues ahead of <laughs> Justice League version, but I just, I think the character building in this one is, I, I just think it could have been just a little bit better. As, as the team ensemble, chemistry wise, I think the chemistry between the characters could have been a bit better, but like individual characters, again, the, the characterization I think is great in this one. They did, they spent a little more time building up each character a little more, but um, not as much as a team. I just like seeing these characters on screen. I don't even like Batman or Superman that much, but I still think having this ensemble of characters, I think this could set up for a really good future. Uh, Christopher Nolan said, stop Zack Snyder from seeing Justice League. There is no way he didn't see that movie. He had to have seen that movie and said, I have to fix this and this and this and this. Of course, yes. Yeah. There is for sure, he, he for sure had to watch, because like, let's be honest, he's not the most perfect director and writer. I'm pretty sure after he saw that, he's like, I gotta fix some of this on my version and make it as good as I can. I just think if you have a script supervisor, I think, they could, and give him the time, I think they can really work for his trilogy vision. I love that the, all the actors come back and to help him yeah, finish, that too. His yeah. dream, uh, finish this movie, that was pretty, uh, pretty amazing as well. It's, it's really nice to see people come together. I like the come together. Come together, like those days. <laughs> it's really nice seeing them come together to like yeah. help him out because they know his vision is going to work. And also, it's a really nice touching message at the end. The first thing you see in the credits is for Autumn, yes. which is a tragic story. So, uh, very beautiful, very touching too. This this was a work of art. This was a, a lot of love and passion given, and you can clearly see this love and passion into it. Yes, 
Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so I, I think that's what really excelled this movie for me. I think that's what made it go from a 7 to an 8. Because if, if it weren't for all this building and love and passion, if we saw this just as it is in the theaters, I'd probably give it a 7. Like, this is good, you know? It's, it's, it's above average. It's, it's good, you know, nothing crazy about it. Especially when you compare. Which is no comparison. They're real. There really is no comparison whatsoever. <laughs> um, yeah, so both eight out of ten. That'll be our final verdict. And please go watch it. If you're if you're a fan of this, please go out and watch this. Comic fan, DC fan, Marvel fan, whatever, or a movie fan, just go watch it. You know, support it's along. Just, yeah, enjoy and it. Sit back. You know, get your food ready. Get your drinks ready. Check it out. Um, and hopefully they'll continue on with some, some more DC movies. Click the like and subscribe. Please share. And uh, I will see you guys later. Bye bye.